bring you a review of the 1980s Kenner Real Ghostbusters Gooper Ghosts. Now, uh, the three that we got pictured here in the box, uh, these boxes were Series One releases. Uh, the once again, these boxes uh, I really always enjoyed these old old artwork, so to speak, the artwork and paintings and drawings that were on the on the old packages. I still get a kick out of that to this day. But the first set of Go Gooper Ghosts here pictured for Series One, we had Squisher. Sludge Bucket and Banshee Bomber. Now the novelty with these things being Gooper Ghosts was the slime. They all came with a jar of slime and what you would do is they you could fill them up and you can see in the pictures here the slime would pump through his torso here and come out his nose and mouth and cover a Ghostbuster or you could fill him up and squeeze his tail end capture Ghostbuster and slime bubbles and then this guy would just dump it on top of them. And each of these also came with a, I happen to just pull this out, just a old poster. Every single one of these had come with one of, one of these posters. It would double as a cross-sell poster for the Series 1 toys. And one of my favorite uh, things was it also had the, the calendar. With a picture of a Ghostbuster and Ghost and every month there. Now I don't even know over the years how many of these posters I have gone through or destroyed by hanging them up in my bedroom as a kid but I am pretty sure that there was a lot of them all right so okay we have the can of slime or as they called it here ectoplasm now you left part of my banshee bomber I always compacted him to fit in his box and when I was a kid and by doing so broke his wings so you might see that each one of these still has slime residues fresh from the 1980s when I took them out and I was like oh okay I obviously didn't clean them too well when I packed them away as a kid but very bright colors in this set uh, I can only imagine what they would look like under a fluorescent light the stickers for the eyes are very bright and vibrant and just the coloring themselves Although, you know, fairly detailed in the feet and arms around there, especially for something in this day and age in which they were produced. You know, it's, uh, it was quite something. Now with Banshee Bomber, he also, uh, since I'll go over this, his novelty was, well, you could flap his wings here. I'm doing it very slow so that way they don't go flying off since I did break them but his mouth is closed there but you'd fill it with slime and hit the button on his back you'd back is for the wings which oh there we go lost one forward is what releases the mouth but since the he would drop and make a mess like that he came with a little play mat you could put your Ghostbusters on there and then drop the slime on top of them and blah, be covered in slime on top of play mat. All right, Cooper Ghosts didn't quite end there. For the second series of Ghostbusters toys, they did incorporate a fourth and final Gooper Ghost. And now this guy is the Green Ghost. Artwork depicted on the front even shows a second series Ghostbuster action figure instead of just the standard first series ones. Now, okay, back then, yes, the Green Ghost was all they had a name for for this guy. Everyone nowadays just flat out knows him as Slimer. He's become pretty much the standard Ghostbuster mascot. But anyway. Slimer, uh, as you can see, as a Cooper ghost, 
quite a bit smaller than the first three. Detailing in the sculpt is actually a lot, lot better as the second series went on to go a little bit further. And he came with this big proton pack. And that's actually what would hold his slime and then you just plunge it through and it would come out his mouth. Yep, but rather a large proton pack there for him. Alright, and since his mess also wasn't that well contained, well, they came. he came with the play mat too, but it's not as stylish as Banshee Bombers. It was just a clear little sheet. You could set them on and go to town goop in your Ghostbusters. Personal note, I really think, hard for me to think back to this because these toys were released, I believe, in 1986 from Kenner. I want to say that this squisher here happened to be my very first Ghostbuster toy ever. Probably about the age of three to four years old. And it was from a cross sell poster. I believe that I got with him that I pointed to my grandma and I was like I really want this guy which led to me getting Peter Venkman as my second Ghostbuster toy ever. Just a personal note there but let's go take a look at Squisher here. His tail operates as his tongue and jaw there. He holds the Ghostbuster in and as you pump down that's where all the slime comes out through the top. Sludge bucket just has a movable ta uh, tongue, almost a tail there. But his tongue just swishes from side to side. That's his only real feature he has other than just creating the slime bubbles. Now these toys, uh, mint and sealed boxes, uh, really nice boxes nowadays retail for some good moolah, but loose, you can still find these toys in decent shape and can get them for a reasonable price for a collection if you're looking at starting. Which I'm actually, since I opened him up, thinking of trying to replace my Banshee Bomber a little bit with one that doesn't have wings that I snapped off the prongs on. Uh, one of the hardest parts to locate might actually be his placemat for the, actually for both of them, the placemat. This one could easily be replicated, but Banshee Bomber's little mat, a uh, little bit, might be a little bit harder to find. So this, this might just be a little bit more difficult to find if you're trying to pick them up piece by piece. Don't really encounter them every day on, on eBay or whatnot, but you, every now and then you find them. So once again, this was uh, Kenner's The Real Ghostbusters toy line, one of my personal favorite toy lines as a child, and still to this day, if you've seen any of our other Kenner Real Ghostbuster reviews, I still love these toys as much as I did back then. And uh, it would be fun to collect them in tin box, although expensive, just with keeping and maintaining the great graphics that they did for the boxes back then. So, the spoon, catch you next time.